Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 6, 2018. I hope everybody had a great holiday, Christmas, New Year's, whatever you celebrate. Hope you had a great time, and I wish everybody a blessed 2018. Uh, I've got some links here. I would also like to thank Tom H. and Jose Angel for sending in some of these links, too. Uh, links will be down in the description below and credits uh, where credits do and who sent the links will be down in the descriptions below so thank you Tom and Jose for these links uh, first up US firm gets to go ahead to try to solve one of the world's greatest aviation mysteries I don't know how many of you are still even thinking about it but it's never quite left my mind the Malaysian flight MH370 to where they were suspecting that maybe on the way between Kuala Lumpur and Beijing that one of the pilots or maybe both of the pilots or whatever turned off the transponder and somehow it ended up crashing or running out of fuel or whatever, possibly off the west coast of Australia. Well, right now, Malaysia is actually going to allow a U.S.-based exploration firm to resume, resume the search for Malaysian Airlines flight MH370. An airline support group told families of the victims on Friday in a bid to solve one of the world's greatest aviation mysteries. MH370, carrying 239 people, disappeared en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing in March of 2014. Australia, China, and Malaysia ended a fruitless search in January of last year. An email sent from the MH Family Support Center and seen by Reuters said the government has accepted an offer by the company Ocean Infinity, Ocean Infinity to resume the search on a no-cure, no-fee basis. That means if they don't find it, nobody pays anything but if they do find it then they get paid I'd say that's a pretty good deal so a government spokesman declined to confirm that an email had been sent to families but said more details on the deal would be forthcoming Ocean Infinity did not immediately respond to requests for comments the company said on Wednesday it had moved a vessel closer to a possible search area the vessel left Durban South Africa on Tuesday and was headed to Perth Australia Reuters sh shipping data shows so hey, maybe they'll have better luck. Maybe they can actually find it. I'd kind of like to find out a little bit more about the mystery, too, especially if they could recover the black box and actually have some kind of audio recordings or something like that to listen to about it. That would be something. So, Next up, from NBCNews.com, NASA may send Dragonfly drone to an alien world. And we're talking a drone not too dissimilar, if the artist rendering is correct here, not too dissimilar from maybe some drones that some of you guys have gotten for Christmas, like those... Uh, DJI Phantom drones and stuff like that. So uh, Saturn's largest moon, Titan, is a promising candidate for extraterrestrial life. NASA may be sending a Dragonfly drone to explore Titan's surface. With its vast oceans and methane-filled rivers and lakes, Titan is a prime candidate for the search for extraterrestrial life. While our knowledge of Saturn's largest moon grew tremendously thanks to the now-defunct Cassini mission, the question of whether Titan is home to primitive life remains a mystery. Now we're at NASA's recent selection of Titan as a possibility for further exploration under its um, new next New Frontiers mission indicates they might want more answers. Selected from a field of 12 possibilities, NASA chose a quadcopter known as Dragonfly as one of two finalists for its next nearly billion dollar mission. The Dragonfly drone, like its namesake, would flit between different parts of Titan's surface to study the moon's landscape and its habitability. Uh, last that I heard, I think they're pretty much estimating that the Titan's atmosphere is pretty much uh, identical to Earth's as far as the density or close enough. And with less gravity, shouldn't be much uh, difficulty for a drone to be able to perform as well or outperform drones on Earth with less gravity tying it down. It's probably going to have a little bit longer flight times and maybe with some more advances in battery technology or something like that. So. Next up from CBS News, 19,000 pound Chinese space station falling uncontrolled back to Earth. And there's also a video you can play about this. It's pretty common for old satellites and other space junk to come falling back down to Earth. But while hundreds of pieces of debris come down each year, scientists are nervously watching the 19,000 pound Chinese space station's course because its out of control route is making it impossible to figure out where it will crash. CBS Denver reports the unmanned space lab named Tiangong-1 is expected to crash back down to Earth at some point in March. China reportedly lost control of the lab nearly two years ago in June of 2016. The Chinese government later released an estimate that predicted Tiangong-1 would come down at some point in late 2017. The vague guess had led experts to believe that the country's space agency had lost all ability to direct the crashing station's course or know where it's, land, where it's going to land. Um, as a matter of fact, too, even now, NASA 
can't predict it that close. They said even possibly hours before, they still would not be able to give other than a general area. Uh, the, the odds right now are around 1 in 10,000 chance that it will actually hit a populated area. But now the area that they're actually estimating is huge. It's 43 degrees north latitude to 43 degrees south latitude. So basically, probably a lot of Canada will be out of harm's way, but all of the United States, Mexico, Australia, pretty much, uh, you know, most of the continent of South America, most of the continent of Africa is included in that estimate right now. Um, so it, uh, it's still going to likely be nothing more than probably a souvenir hunt. Hopefully it won't be anything that actually damages anybody or hurts any civilians. That's still rather unlikely, but who knows? Maybe you might end up with a piece of spacecraft in your um, backyard as a souvenir. That would be something kind of cool, wouldn't it? And next up, this is from, this is the one Jose sent in to, and uh, I'm going to give you two links, one to the video that I watched to, and the other one to uh, technologyreview.com where they actually talk about it. It's called Ziplines, Ambitious Medical Drone Delivery in Africa. Now, these are more like little model airplanes, but you can still call them drones. So in, in Rwanda, an early commercial test of unmanned aerial vehicles cuts medical facilities time to procure blood from four hours to 15 minutes. And also, despite the fact, too, that in some cases, even if they can get blood in four hours, it's just not practical for various logistic reasons. But with these little drone things, they've got this drone aircraft that can cover, I guess, the majority of the population of Rwanda from just one location. It flies um, about, uh, what they say, something like, well, I'll just read the article here. You can hear the drone before it's visible, whining like a mosquito above the hillside grounds of Rwanda's Kabagi District Hospital, emerging through a patch of fog roughly 100 feet in the air. The small plane quickly disappears again, circling in an oblong pattern as it descends toward an altitude low enough to make its drop. After a period of silence, it's suddenly back, swooping over the roof of Kabagi's accident ward to drop its payload on the driver with a thud. On the ground... Uh, lies a red cardboard box roughly the size of a shoe box attached to a parachute made of wax paper and biodegradable tape. The contraption may resemble a children's art product, but its uh, contents are life-saving, packed tightly inside are two units of human blood, which will probably soon be used for transfusions during surgeries or complicated childbirths or to treat young victims of malaria. It can make the flight to almost any location needed and it's within its pattern in less than an hour, and it can drop within a five-meter area. So. This thing is really quite useful too, and because of the roads and the road conditions, and you never know what you're going to encounter. A lot of people just end up dying, especially pregnant women that have hemorrhaging after childbirth. Just for the lack of sake of one or two pints of blood, they end up dying, and this may end up being a thing of the past, at least in Rwanda. The plastic sachets of blood are among the first commercial products ever delivered by drone, part of a partnership between the Rwandan government and the Silicon Valley-based robotics firm Zipline, which began introducing the blood drops at Kabgayi, if I'm pronouncing it, I pronounced it probably about three ways now, but Kabgayi Hospital in late 2016. The service, which is now delivered to seven of 21 planned facilities, is still in its infancy, yet it has already had an impact. In the past, hospital staff would make three drives per week to procure blood products in the capital, Kigali, 60 miles away, a three- or four-hour round trip. Emergencies meant additional trips, sometimes resulting in life-threatening delays. So now a technician can basically just get on his cell phone and just send a text and usually within 15 minutes they can have a drone on its way and uh, 45 minutes or less later have the blood to be able to use for emergency use so I would say that's pretty good and I also got um, there's a TED talk that the guy that actually um, his name is Keller Ronaldo um, he was the one that came up with this idea so if you want to listen to his uh, TED talk about that too so Anyway, that's about it for this week. Thanks everybody that sent me the links. I really appreciate it. Keep sending the links in. Even if, remember, even if you send a link in and I don't use it right away, a lot of times I will use that to explore off to get a side link on another story, or I will save it in reserve for when I have a very slow week and don't have a lot of material. So uh, please send any kind of links to any science story or anything like that you might be uh, interested in hearing. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.